What's going on everyone? Scott here. Welcome back to the channel. So Michigan State basketball faces Niagara on Thursday night at 8 p.m. on Big Ten Network. Um, Michigan State's second game of the year. This will be the second game for the Purple Eagles as well. Going to jump into the game. A little bit of a preview for it here. What we want to see Michigan State improve on from game one as we head into the Kansas game next Tuesday. Before we do jump in though, if you could just hit that like and subscribe button down there. More Michigan State content throughout the season. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a video. So a little background on Niagara last year. They went 16-16 and and they actually almost beat Notre Dame. A seven point loss in South Bend last year, but this is a completely new roster from last year. No one that played on last year's team is on the team. They are all transfers. I've never seen this before. I'm sure it has happened, especially in this new era of college basketball, college athletics as a whole, but just something to note from last year. Uh, we'll see how that translates with a team full of all new transfers. Obviously, they have had one game. They played Houghton College a 100-65 win to start their season. Jahari Williamson, a Valspario transfer. I know I said that name wrong, but I apologize. But transfer had 16 points. Ohio transfer, Olomide Adelun had 15 points as well. Jalen Martinez, a senior center for them, grabbed nine boards in 16 minutes for them. Seven players overall in double figures. Again, the competition there for Houghton College, probably not the best. Can't say I'm too familiar with them. But overall for them, a very good three-point shooting night. 44.4% from three, 57.4% from the field. They had, did have 14 turnovers, though. They forced 20. So we'll see how that looks and how that translates over, obviously, against a better opponent here in Michigan State. If you look at Bart Torvik, who we didn't mention in the preview for the first game of the season against Monmouth, I don't know how we could get through an episode without mentioning Bart Torvik, but we did it. But now that we are getting into the season, I'll bring up Bart Torvik. Again, love the website. Definitely go check them out. But they have them ranked as the number 318th team in the country. Michigan State right now is 17 right now. Obviously, most teams, some teams haven't even played a game yet, but, you know, obviously still it's the first week of the season. But that's where they have them right now. It's The game is projected as a 25-point Michigan State win after a 24-point win on Monday against Monmouth. Look, if Niagara shoots the ball well like they did in their first game, I think they can keep this thing closer than that or closer than it should be, should I say, especially if Michigan State can't hit threes like we saw on Monday night going 3 for 18, as we talked about in the recap for that one. From the MSU side, though, I um, want to see Jaden Akins have another good game, just build on that consistency as the number one option, and continue to prove himself that, hey, we're going to be all right. I can be the number one option from this team and lead us this year like I think he can, and that he showed a great sign of getting off to a good start on Monday night. Next, we need to see Xavier Booker and Frankie Fiddler hit some shots. Look, everyone struggled shooting on Monday night. Well, look, those two guys are going to be key contributors for what this team can be this year. For both of them as well, want to see Book start grabbing some more boards. Only two on Monday night. And then Frankie would like to see him uh, grab some assists. I think he can, especially that he's establishing himself as someone who can draw fouls. If you get people in that situation, think you're going to draw the foul and you have some good action running off for him. I think he can pick up some assists as well this season. So would like to see that start to materialize. Um, next up, want to see Jackson Kohler have a better game. He wasn't horrible, had some trouble catching the ball in the post. So just would like to see that cleared up. I mean, he did rebound the ball well. I think he had eight opening night. Like to see that to continue, but would like to see some more evolution on the offensive end for him, obviously. And, you know, I'll take Tom Izzo's word for it that he hasn't seen him drop the ball like that and not be able to catch the ball in the post and make those moves. Haven't seen that all summer and exhibition season. So would like to see him get more comfortable and start to make those post moves a little bit quicker, as we kind of talked about, so he doesn't give defenders time to double over like we've seen or rake down and stuff, knock that ball out. We saw that too many times in the exhibition games and in that first game of the season. So get to that move quicker, or if not, if there's not a move there to be made at first, then pass it out, relocate, force the defense to shift, to get into a better position, to get the ball. We'd like to see him get up to two threes as well. We saw him go one for two opening night. I know that's, you know, kind of not something that he's not going to get the ball and create a three for himself, but would like to see the offense, you know, kind of be moving and flowing for him to be allowed to, you know, float out and get a couple three-point opportunities 
in this game and going forward in this season. Next up, Trey Holloman would like to see him get settled into the season. After fouling out in 11 minutes, we're going to need him to be big time this season coming off the bench. As we talked about um, in the recap for the Monmouth game, that Tom Izzo talked about with Jackson Kohler and Trey Holloman both being, you know, a spark plug off the bench, a Morris Peterson type. So he's going to need that, especially as we get into Kansas next week and then a couple weeks, Thanksgiving week, when we get into the Maui tournament. Then obviously once we get into Big Ten play as well. So fouled out night one in 11 minutes, but, you know, would like to just see him, you know, get his feet wet in the season. We, we saw him make quite a jump from freshman year to sophomore year like to see that sophomore to junior year leap that we think he can make and be the key contributor for this team that I believe that he can. And then last thing, continue to defend, rebound, and run. What we saw opening night and is the mantra of this program. As we said, would like to see some more of those three-point shots go down, shoot those percentages a little bit better, but just keep defending, rebounding, and running because that's the stuff that can translate throughout the season and stuff you can hang your hat on as you go into a tough matchup against Kansas in the Champions Classic. And then, like we said, as we go into Maui and carry that into Big Ten play, obviously two games in December and then in January once Big Ten play picks back up. So overall, just looking for some more refinement and improvement as we talked about at the beginning of this week for Michigan State in both of these games this week, but now we are on to Niagara before we move into a big game against Kansas. We mentioned it a couple times. So 8 o'clock on Thursday against Niagara in the Breslin Center, but that'll do it for this one. We'll be back, obviously, with a recap from this one. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.